Admire the majesty that is the Milky Way. It's our celestial home. See all the detail in this gorgeous photo. Look at all those stars, gas, and beautiful glowing space dust. Can you imagine what went into taking this photo? What marvels of human engineering to get a camera to photograph the whole Milky Way all at once? Of course you can, you're smart. Let's walk through this together. First, you need to have a camera that worked in space and a big wide field of view. Sure, we can build those. Then you need to take that camera and place it just outside the Milky Way, pointing back at Earth. Like, if you're taking a picture of a house, you need to stand in the street out front. So, we figure out how to be on the street in front of the Milky Way, you need to be about 100,000 light years above it. That's not so far. Some galaxies are like millions of light years away. So how do we get a camera this sophisticated that far out above the Milky Way? You know, the galaxy that we're inside of? This is where the photo of the Milky Way curtain comes down. By our current propulsion technology, it would take us 2.2 billion years to get to that sweet spot. Truth is, it's not a photo. It's an artist's illustration of the Milky Way. Now, here's a photograph of a galaxy that sort of looks like what you'd see if you were outside the Milky Way. This is NGC 6744, a galaxy that many astronomers think looks pretty similar to the Milky Way. See the swirling arms, the bright core surrounded by dark lanes of gas and dust, the blobs of active star formation? Hold it in your mind. Here's an actual photo of the Milky Way. Right here is the core, the brightest, densest spot. Stars are packed so close together, it's hard to tell them apart. Also, the location of our galaxy's supermassive black hole, a region that contains 4.1 million times the mass of the sun. That's right there. Stars swirl around this region like comets going around a star. Didn't see it? I promise, that's the spot. Now, compare this to what it looks like when you peer away from the core, towards the outer disk of the Milky Way. Man, those photos sure are different, and by that I mean, shouldn't one of these nearly identical pictures have a giant glowing ball in the middle? Why can't we see it? It's right there-ish. It's dust. Interstellar dust. Now, back to the image of NGC 6744. See the dust lanes surrounding the core of the galaxy? From our position within the galaxy, that thick dust totally obscures our view. The dust is created by stars as they fuse material and create energy. Now it collects together by gravity into formations that obscure our view. Fortunately, astronomers have a few additional wavelengths they can use to see into the galaxy. So we look at the core of the galaxy in the infrared, like with the Spitzer Space Telescope. It looks like this. In fact, in the infrared, you can slice right through that dust and see the environment around the supermassive black hole at the heart of the galaxy. Dr. Andrea Ghez and her team use this technique to find stars whipping around. Nothing could be this dense and dark except a supermassive black hole. Astronomers have a name for the region of the sky obscured by the Milky Way, the Zone of Avoidance. See, now that is a cool name. It's a little 1950s, but it's way better than water reclamation system. Back in the days that astronomers could only make visual observations, the zone of avoidance took up about 20% of the night sky. But by observing in other wavelengths, like infrared, x-ray, gamma rays, especially radio waves, astronomers can see all but about 10% of the sky. So what's on the other side of that 10%? It's mostly a mystery. So thanks, dust, for ruining our view to one of the most beautiful objects in the night sky. I suppose we could thank you for giving us some beautiful nebulae to look at. I guess you're not all that bad. Just get out of my sinuses already. So what's your favorite dark nebula? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. And we'd like to thank Stephen Kinder and Dennis Moniman, and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. Well, I suppose we should uh, thank you for giving us some beautiful neb- I'm gonna do it again, sorry.